All right, so Oxygen OS for the Poco X3 Pro. Now, yet again, we have an update from the wonderful team who is behind this. Now, you do see that the latest stable Oxygen OS port is available. I've been using it since yesterday and there are mixed impressions. There are performance numbers that I have and a few of my testers have tested this ROM as well. So today is the quick, complete review in which we're going to talk about the performance numbers. We're going to talk about the charging speeds. We don't really have a lot of battery backup data because it's within 24 hours that we are making this review. But for the Poco X3 Pro, the latest port of Oxygen OS is here. We've tried it and this is the review. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, well, join us on Telegram. We have more than a thousand like-minded people over there. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook as well. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to PhoneOps. My name is Kailash. Let's get going. All right, so right off the bat, let's see what we have here. We have Oxygen OS stable port. Maintainer is a Mac 766. Device is Poco X3 Pro, of course. It works on YU and Vima. Android version is Android 11. Build date is the 7th of December, 2021. There's a download link. There's a PayPal link as well. If you wish, you can go ahead and donate to them. Now the changelog, it says over here, it's based on OnePlus 8T, based on Oxygen OS stable 11.0.11.11. .11. A lot of 11s in there. October security patch, fixed wallpaper issue, modded UI with one UI style, replaced Cyberpunk themes as the mod UI. Now, the notes over here state that it includes G-Apps. The firmware is 12.0, whatever you want to choose for your region. NFC is not working yet, not that it matters. I don't use NFC much, it completely depends upon you. For disabling media album art, that's on the lock screen, you have to follow this step. And the flashing guide is over here in the support group. Do not PM the dev and all these things are present. So yes, welcome to Oxygen OS for the Poco X3 Pro here. Now, the moment you boot into this particular ROM in typical Oxygen OS style, a stable Oxygen OS port, this is a very, very clean user interface. It looks really, really great and it works absolutely fine. So the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that it has a very, very clean user interface. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which just like other custom ROMs, it works absolutely fine. There is no problem whatsoever with the Google Feed. If you swipe from here, you have the quick tiles and you have the clock over here, as you can see. Uh, I've installed another clock by mistake, but you do have all the OnePlus applications, almost all of them. And if you talk about the quick tiles over here, you have flashlight, auto rotate, vision comfort, hotspot. You can go ahead and edit this and you can add a ton of other features as well. Typical OnePlus stuff, Zen mode is present, the screen recorder is present, you do have Xiaomi parts available here as well. And you do have the FPS info overlay, which is a part of Xiaomi parts, right? A part of Xiaomi parts. So yeah, that's added. That works absolutely fine. Overall, this ROM is really, really smooth, just like previous Oxygen OS builds. But before we actually, you know, get into more details, let me tell you, there are one of the two things. It's either I did something wrong while flashing, which for which the chances are less. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but the chances are less because I flash every single day or it's something with the ROM because on me this morning while testing this ROM, it auto rebooted twice and uh, it almost gave me a heart attack. I thinking that my device is going to get bricked as well. It would be fun if my device get, gets bricked. It's under warranty and it will allow me to tell you what exactly happens when a device gets bricked. Anyways, that's a discussion for another day. So over here, if you press and hold, you do have things like home settings for your OnePlus launcher. Your OnePlus launcher does give you some customization options. You do have the option of wallpapers over here. So all different sorts of OnePlus wallpapers are present and working absolutely fine, as you can see over here. So you can go ahead and change the wallpaper. You should not have any issues at all. Now moving on, if you actually go to widgets, you do have your standard Android 11 widgets, widgets which are working absolutely fine. If you swipe from the top to bottom, you see over here, you do get the OnePlus dashboard whatever they are calling it, as you can see, and that works absolutely fine. Now I'll tell you this, in this particular build of Oxygen OS, the smoothness is next level. It's really, really great. Although we are running at 120 Hertz mode, you will see that we have dynamic refresh rate doing a great job. The info overlay is here. It's going all the way from 10 to 90 to 120 FPS, which is really, really neat. Another good thing about this particular ROM is it doesn't really boot with a lot of bloatware, which is again, a good thing, right? So if you go to about phone, it will say that it's a OnePlus 8T with six gigabytes RAM and 128 internal and all those specs are correct for the Poco X3 Pro. 
Android version is 11 and this is the build number. So if you go over here, you will see that they are running a oxygen kernel over here. For the first time I'm seeing that they are running a different kernel and we'll definitely go ahead and see that when we look at the benchmark numbers, right? Now you do have a dedicated game space of OnePlus which works absolutely fine. I've not had any problems. And by the way, I'm planning to make a complete gaming review of this particular ROM because a lot of people immediately after looking at this particular review will have a question, how is the gaming performance? How is the gaming performance? So we'll make a gaming review for you guys, don't worry. So that's why you already see I have Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile and Battlegrounds Mobile India installed. So you have things like your gaming statistics over here, your you know recorded or saved me media and under settings you do have a ton of options like gaming tools, this, that, all the other things as you can see. Now also make sure the moment you've installed this particular ROM, I was waiting for this to show it to you on video, make sure you go ahead and uh, you know update these things because remember that fps info overlay which you were asking me where can i see that it was available in uh, the play store because you need to update that so i've just updated that and now let's go to settings over here as you can see gaming tool handy gaming tools swipe down from the upper left and stuff like that so for example if i go ahead and launch bgy mobile india there you go you have pro gaming mode you have apps you have screen recorder as you can see, and that works absolutely fine, right? So we'll talk about the gaming features in the gaming review. Now let's talk about the normal usage. I did install AccuBattery to check the charging speeds, but for some reason it's not working well with this particular ROM. We did go from 50% to 100% in about 40 minutes. So the fast charging feature is present. You do get the fast charging animation of OnePlus, like the dash charging or whatever they are calling it now. They keep changing names. Anyways, so yeah, the charging is working fine. The battery backup is pretty decent. Even if you talk about the current, uh, you know, cycle over here, this is the second cycle. So if we say go to battery, view detailed usage, you do see that we are at 85% battery. So I've been using this particular Battlegrounds Mobile India like for some time, at least five to 10 minutes and we've unplugged like one hour back. So you also have something called as thermal profiles, which is really, really great. It also gives you access to the 180 Hz touch sampling rate. So I think that is a good thing because you get, you're getting the goodness of a custom ROM on a stock based ROM of another manufacturer. So that is something really, really neat. Now moving on under Wi-Fi and, wi and network, you have your typical stuff over here. Nothing out of the ordinary, just things which were present in Oxygen OS earlier, dual channel network acceleration. Now, I don't really have a SIM card on this particular device, so I'm not going to head and check that, right? Now, apart from that, you have data usage, private DNS, and under Bluetooth device connection, Bluetooth is working absolutely fine, no problem whatsoever. If you go to display, you do have the color calibration, the refresh rate in which you have 60 hertz, 90 hertz, and 120 hertz. Now, we have switched to 120. So you will notice that it should go above 90 most of the time because remember the OnePlus 80 supports 90 Hertz. Now the screen calibration for me doesn't really work that great from here. It works from Xiaomi parts, which is fine. Front camera display area is a selection over here. Apps to display in full screen. You have dark mode, ambient display. Now this is your typical always on display, right? You can go ahead and enable it, but I would recommend against that because there you go. You do have your always on display working absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. And your fingerprint scanner on this ROM is working fine as well. So no problem with the fingerprint scanner as well. Apart from this, you have font size, display scaling, status bar in which you can display the network speed and the battery percentage. So that's something neat. You have icon manager, time and all the other options. So all in all, under display as well, there are no problems. Now, this is a good part over here, customization. You do have a ton of always on displays, but remember this device has an LCD panel. So if you go ahead and use always on display, you'll get bad battery life. So be wary of that whenever you do that. So you do have some customization under sounds and vibrations. You do have direct sound enhancer with hi-fi, which is present and works fine as well. And then you have your privacy settings over here in which you can go ahead and make sure that your data is private and stuff although on a custom rom how effective it would be i don't really know but you have accounts google utilities now under utilities you do have app locker which allows you to you know lock applications for example let's go ahead and uh lock bgmi over here so let's see what happens when we open bgmi there you go it'll ask you to draw a pattern and then it will launch the game so let's now go back to settings over here 
app locker schedule power on and off you have dual apps like parallel apps is what they are calling it and under system you have all your basic options including xiaomi parts now the reason xiaomi parts is important is because you not only have the in fps info overlay you have display calibration in which you can you know go ahead and calibrate your display as per your needs and you do have quite a few presets over here as well so i've used one of these and now the colors look much much better and after the initial random reboots that i had a couple of them i've not had any random reboots so the rom seems stable it might be a one off thing don't judge the rom based on that that's everything about the settings menu now as far as safety net is concerned let's go ahead and check over here we've not installed majisk safety net passes out of the box if you go to the play store and if you go to the settings over here you will see that the play protect is device certified so that's good as well and as far as drm info is concerned on this device with a big display wideband l1 is present so not only this is a smooth and decent rom it also gives you peace of mind for your banking and financial applications as well as you have your hd content that you can consume as well now quickly let's talk about the benchmark numbers we've spoken about the battery life and the charging now one small point over here battery life should be decent it should be able to it should be able to get you through a day right now let's quickly go ahead and talk about things like cpu throttle test and to and uh, the geekbench score so as far as n22 is concerned as you can see over here 550 1798 now i know that is less compared to the stock rom which gets around 570 580 and as you can see the temperature increased quite a lot while running this particular benchmark as you can see so that is there because this supposedly this rom will perform great let me quickly show you the cpu throttle test and the geekbench scores as far as the geekbench score is concerned 762 single core and 2595 multi core a decent score multi core could have been better but very very decent and the cpu throttle to 92 percent of its max performance although the average score is quite low 169 so that's close to 170,000. but i think it's fine for a port rom they are doing a brilliant job overall so you know if you ask me about the latest oxygen OS before i do a gaming review from a daily driver point of view you don't really have any major major problems you can definitely go ahead and use it i have installed google camera go over here as you can see and it does a decent job of clicking pictures you can install a full-fledged g cam and stuff like that so all in all the latest port of oxygen OS is splendid no worries no major bugs that i've found in the initial 24 hour impressions let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video until the next one this is kalash signing off at phone ops keep smiling take care goodbye